So they admit WWF was not very good this time. You had Rocky Maivia with his wacky hair or whatever that outfit was. American Blue Blood Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the Ringmaster Steve Austin, the Real Double J, Farouk in a Helmet, etc., etc. They point out... I have to jump in here. I'm sorry. So they start showing all of these lame gimmicks, and they start going on this big rant about how now we were moving into the reality era. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what they choose for reality is Brian Pillman and Steve Austin in the gun angle. Yeah. Yeah, pull a gun on some motherfucker on live television, but you guys are just going to wrestle next week. I mean, it was totally in no way realistic, this angle. They're like, oh, well, if someone really went to a guy's house, the other guy would pull a gun. But it's like, dude, come on. This guy goes and breaks into this guy's house. He's he's literally breaking and entering. The other guy is pulling a fucking firearm. And if you recall correctly, like the whole fallout was the next week Vince just said, I'm sorry for what we put on television. That's what they're saying is the reality era. But anyway, I'm looking at all these goofy gimmicks and I'm looking at, you know, whatever they're making fun of. The Sultan. The Sultan and this and that. And they're talking about how unrealistic the early 90s was. And I'm sitting there thinking, do you remember who was heavily involved in creative in the early 90s? Vince Russo. No, Bruce Pritchard, the oh, early 90s. Oh, my bad. Well, then I'm thinking about all of this stuff and how they're talking about how it sucked because it was unrealistic. We had to move into the reality era. And I'm thinking, has there been one realistic thing about this fucking fiend storyline with Alexa Bliss? They fucking vanish. They got goo coming out of their fucking head. They're lighting each other on fucking fire. And who's there in Vince's ear again? Bruce fucking Pritchard. Hmm. The same guy that was doing all of the stuff that they now say was so lame and fake and bullshit. And meanwhile, I'm living through an era where it's lame and there's a bunch of fake bullshit. And they're just... Going forward, like, oh, this is how we're going to turn this fucking thing around. That was another very rich moment here on this show from 2014. So WWF was apparently on the brink of extinction. And Vince says they were losing the war. Heyman, Paul Heyman, says he thought that WWF was going to go out of business. And so it was time to get reality. And we start talking about the gun episode, which Brian just talked about what happened. And they talk about this like 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And at the time, as I'm watching, I thought, was this really that big a deal? And by the end of the story, I realized, no, it wasn't that big a deal. But they had stretched to fill time on the show. So it's well, like... Well, not only that, they had a narrative. And for the narrative that they were trying to tell about how they turned things around to win, they had to make this into this, like, groundbreaking... And, like, it was famous. I mean, no one who was saw it will forget it. It was absolutely famous. But it was like they did it for a week, and then that was it. It was done. They just moved on. Monday Night War, Season 1, Episode 3, Embracing Attitude. So I have to say, before we get started here, hmm. that this was copyright 2014. Okay. Right. It is currently 2021. Right. Correct? Checks out. Checks out, yes. Okay, so by my math, this was seven years ago. Sure. Okay, right? Yeah. All right. Also, by my math, 2014 was two years before 2016. Am I correct about that? You're on fire. Okay. Do you guys remember what happened right around 2016? Off the top of my head, no. Well, a lot, Vinny. My daughter sure was what? born, for example. Okay. But what I'm bringing up is that 2016 was when they began this women's evolution. Ah, oh, I see. Jesus God Almighty. 2016 and 2014 may have been 10 lifetimes. They fucking do this show. It's about the Attitude Era. And they are making a big deal about how awesome these half-naked women were. Oh, yes. Oh, we changed the way that women were seen in wrestling. They used to be women like Elizabeth or lady wrestlers. That's what that's what Stephanie said. They used to be called lady wrestlers. Oh, but during the Attitude Era, man, Sonny's out there showing her tits, and she's shaking her ass, 
And we had all these women. They're like celebrating. Yes. And they're making it like it's the greatest thing when these women just started being whatever they were. I was like, oh, my God. It was that, yes. it was completely insane to watch yes, I, them celebrating and romanticizing the way that they used women in the nineties. Not not just and they. not two years later, <laughs> two years later, Stephanie's doing this big thing about oh, it's terrible the way that women used to be used in wrestling. It was so dis disgraceful and disrespectful. Now women will be respected in this business. I was like, oh my god, this is incredible it actually makes me want to watch more between this and vince talking more about competition oh my god. i was like oh my god this is just the greatest it was fucking insane it's not just they celebrating sunny being naked on tv every week and sable showing a thong every week it's stephanie yes the very same individual yes who takes credit for inventing women wrestling two years later it's it, it it's I'm watching Stephanie talk about how going literally from the jumping bomb angels <laughs> yes. to Sunny the Thong and what a great upgrade this was. Oh, women are getting this main they're, event push in wrestling by no, showing their asses. They are no longer just lady wrestlers. They are sexy and manipulative. Yes. Like, I could not even believe it. I could not believe it. This was two years before the women's evolution, two years. Yeah, that, that was Fuck. by far that was by far the most jaw drop jaw dropping thing. Oh, it was otherwise a was dull it episode. Ever. That was a Are you poem? ready for my poem? Sure. Please. If you're gonna write a goddamn poem about the Fiend and Randy Orton, it needs to be like this. Mm -hmm. Vince booked a match between Fiend and Randy. I would rather a crab gave me a handy. <laughs> Holds and goo and a bunch of tricks. Rather unwrap a bag of dicks. Vince thought, God damn, this is it. But this match was a piece of shit. Thank you. I wrote that during the show. It's amazing. He started talking about, is it Bet Kings? I don't know. But they started uh, talking about some... Uh, There's Draft Kings. Draft that Kings. Is. Compulsive gamblers. They had some things to say here. There were only a few guys in the cage at the time, and they were down. So he escaped his pod early to take a gamble that he might be able to eliminate one of them. Which, by the way, did not pay off. But I was told, wait, Brian, it doesn't matter if the gamble pays off or not. I said, what? You're telling me that if you have a net worth of $500,000, and you see that it's the Seattle Seahawks against the Portland Trailblazers, or whatever the Super Bowl might be, and you bet on the Seahawks. Somehow the Trailblazers win, okay. and you lose $500,000. Okay. You're broke, but you're telling me that you can go to your fucking wife and say, yes, dear, that's how professional gambling works. Do you know what your wife will say to you? She'll say, fuck you. We're divorced. <laughs> you compulsive gamblers. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.